This is just a reminder that there is no videography or photography permitted during this show. Thank you and have a good show. Hello and thank you all for coming. Thank you all. It's with pure joy that I'm hosting this event tonight. It's a dream come true. It's a historic night. We have the most distinguished three human rights workers, activists, peace lovers, Mrs. Shirina Abadi, <laughs> Mrs. Shala Laiji, <laughs> and Mrs. Mehrangi Zakar. It's been a long road, it's been hard, but it's been absolutely labor of love for me to organize this night. It was about time that the Nobel Committee awarded the Nobel Prize to one of these active human rights work is from Middle East, a female from Middle East. It is historic again, isn't it? Thank you, Nobel Prize Committee. You made absolutely the best possible choice. Thank you, thank you, thank you how sweet it is. But people like you, Mrs. Abadi, Mrs. Laiji, Mrs. Carr, our young people now got role models. They're going to pick up the torch in future. And they're going to follow the path. Tonight is to celebrate the awarding of Nobel Prize to Ms. Abadi. But it is also to celebrate the life and the, to honor the memory of Ms. Zara Kazemi. Kazemi symbolizes those untold number of people who disappear, who are arrested, and who pay dearly with their lives every day. To have a tangible presence of Ms. Kazemi, I also ask her son, Stefan Hashemi, to be here tonight. Thank you, Stefan, for taking the long trip with your busy schedule. Thank you, Ms. Abadi. Thank you, Ms. Laiji. Thank you, Ms. Carr, again, for your busy schedules to take the time to make the long trips, to be here with us tonight. We all thank you. Now we have a very full program tonight, so I'm going to cut my speech short. But before 
we ask our distinguished guests here to come up on stage and give some speeches. And we'll have a question answer period after. Before that, what I'd like you to do is to stand up so we could sing our national anthem.
So in the first part of the program, I'm going to ask our guests, Ms. Mrs. Abadi, Mrs. Laiji, and Mrs. Carr, as well as Ms. Stefan Hashemi, to come on the stage. And instead of me giving them a biography, maybe I could ask him to give a short biography of themselves and give a short speech and after we're going to have a question answer period what I would like you to do is to make notes we're fortunate tonight to have also Dr. Hackcock here who uh, has taken his time to come from Seattle. And if I may ask him to also help us with the translation. And uh, what I'd like you to do is to take a piece of paper, make sure you write on the upper right hand side of the paper who the question is directed to, one of the four. And try to print so it's legible. After the question and answer period, we're going to have a 20 minutes intermission. In the second part of the program, we're going to have music. We've got Persian, Nazari musicians in here. And we will also have Vancouver National uh, Dance uh, Group. To, they're going to perform some uh, dances here for us. Thanks very much. با تشکر فراوان دوباره از خانم عبادی، خانم لایجی و خانم کار که دعوت منو پذیرفتن و رنج سفر رو هموار کردن و استفان هاشمی میخوام خواهش کنم که بفهمید بالای سن اینجا با سلام خدمت دوستان هموطنان عزیز هزار گرامی و خانم ها و آقایان Greetings to my friends, my compatriots, ladies and gentlemen بسیار خوشحالم که فرصتی دست داد که شانس دیدار مجدد شما رو پیدا کردم و از این بابت از مجنیان این برنامه خصوصا آقای 
دکتر مشکینی سپاس گذارم. I'm very pleased to have had another opportunity to be with you and address you and for that I would like to thank the host Dr. Mishkini. همه از دامان یک مادر بیرون آمده ایم و تمام عشق و علاقه ما افتخاری است که به وطنمون داریم. We have all been raised in the lap of a single mother and all of our love and interest is devoted to the mother that we love in motherland. Iran is our common ground. As such, when we get together, we speak of our mother, Iran. من در نظر داشتم بیشتر متمرکز بشم در مورد کیس خاصی که راجع به ایش صحبت کنیم به فوتو جورنالیست ایرانی شجاعی که متاسفانه به قطر رسید So my talk relates to the photojournalist, the very courageous photojournalist, Iranian photojournalist, who unfortunately was murdered. دانشجویان و خانواده هایی بود که بچه هاشون مشکل پیدا کرده بودن and she had sought and obtained a legal permission to conduct interviews with students, families and individuals in Tehran and at school in Iran هنگامی که مشغول مصاحبه و تهیه اکس و فیلم بود چند پاستا بهش مراجعه می کنند و ازش می که دوربینش رو به اونها بده و فیلم رو به اونها بده Once when she was taking photographs and preparing to prepare her report a few revolutionary guards approach her and ask her to submit her camera to them اما او شجاع از این کار اعتراف می کنه و فیلم و دوربین رو فیلم رو فوراً از دوربین در میاره سیاه میکنه علت این کار همه بود که نمیخواست برای کسی باعث درد سر بشه Instead of submitting her camera she very courageously uh, took out the film took the film out of the camera and uh, made it not work uh, because she did not wish to involve others and implicate them in her affair این مسئله باعث بگو مگویی می شود که منجر به این میشه که ایشون رو به داخل زندان اوین می برن و براش قرار بازش صده می کنن Because the film had been exposed uh, the revolutionary guards carry her inside the prison and they issue an arrest warrant for her بعد از چند روز در 
نشریات ایران درج می شود که یک جورنالیست در زندان سکته مغزی کرده و در گذشت. After a few days, the news gets written up in Iranian newspapers that a photojournalist has died because of some uh, mental uh, seizure in the prison. کسانی که از این جریان اطلاع داشتند و خصوصا خانواده خانم کازمی شروع به اعتراض می کنند و مسئله رو باز می کنند در بین افکار عمومی But people who were in the know on her case and knew what she was uh, doing, they start exposing the lie in the Iranian press. در اثر فشار افکار عمومی رئیس جمهور هیئتی رو مأمور بررسی این امر میکنه اون هیئت در نهایت گزارش میدن که نه سکته مغزی نبوده بلکه ضربه مغزی بوده. Under pressure from the public opinion, the president appoints a committee to investigate the case, and the committee ends up writing a report uh, acknowledging that the murder, that, that the death was not as a result of hemorrhaging in the brain, but it was because of a, 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 a strike in the head. Certain uh, secrets are revealed. <laughs> مدیر کل وزارت فرهنگشاد وزارت فرهنگشاد اسلامی طی یک مصاحبه اعلام میکنه که داستان تهران به او گفته که مطالبی بگوید که درست نیست uh, one of the secrets is that the deputy minister of uh, culture and islamic guidance uh, announces that uh, the uh, Prosecutor General of Tehran has uh, confided in him that certain aspects of the story were not true. At any rate, a case is made and a, a, a group of people start investigating this case. مادر خانم زهرا کازمی که در شیراز زندگی میکردن پیش من میان و از من درخواست از من درخواست میکنن که بکالتشون رو قبول کنه. Ms. Zahra Kazemi's mother who lives in Shiraz comes to me and asks me to take over the case of her daughter's murder. و به من میگن که قبلا از طرف دادگاه وکیلی که ساکن تهران هم بوده به شیراز رفته و از این خانم وکالت گرفته و این خانم هم چون مسن بودند و زیاد متوجه مسائل دادوسی نبودند به این وکالت داده اما به محض اینکه بستگانش متوجه میشن او رو راهنمایی میکنن که فورا بیاد پیش و And one of the things she confides in me is that prior to coming to Tehran to see me Uh, some attorney from Tehran goes to Shiraz and uh, asks her to appoint him as her attorney. And she, having been advanced in age and not knowing any better, of course, assents to that and uh, gives her signature to the other person to be her attorney. Okay. And my strategy in this case is to uh, reveal my hand, show my hand toward the end of the case. من در جلسه اول دادرسی شرکت نکردم و به موکلم یعنی مادر خانم کازمی هم گفتم او هم نره. So I did not attend the first session at the court and I advised uh, Ms. Kazemi's mother not to attend it either. زیرا که می دانستم جلسه اول جلسه مهمی نیست و uh, چون پرونده ناقصه حتما uh, جلسات متعدد دیگری خواهیم داشت. This, this is because I know that the file is, has shortcomings and uh, is not complete, is incomplete, and therefore I'm sure that there will be other sessions after the completion of the file. خوشبختانه در جلسه اول اتفاقی که میخواستم افتاد یعنی دادگاه دادرسی رو علنی اعلام کرد. Fortunately, what I had anticipated did happen at court, and that is the court agreed to declare the case Uh, open to the public. 
حق داره در جلسه اول اعلام بکنه که این داد و سی علانه سی آقای در علانه According to the laws in Iran the, uh, the, the judge has the right to declare a, a case open or close to the public اگر اعلام کرد علانه سی دیگه حق نداره اون رو غیر علانه اعلام بکنه uh, اگر ولی سی داد با داد و سی رو علانه اعلام کرد دیگه بعدا در جلسات آتی حق نداره اون رو غیر علانهش بکنه So if, if the chief of the court declares a case open to the public, uh, he or she cannot, in subsequent cases, in subsequent sessions, announce it uh, close to the public. For the plaintiff. And I started reading the case, the file. من بعد از این پرونده رو خوندم نگاه هم به این پرونده و احترامی که به زهرا کازمی داشتم چندین برابر شد. After I took a look at the uh, reading, the, the reading of uh, the file, uh, my respect for the case and for زهرا کازمی increased many fold. تا قبل از اینکه من پرونده رو بخونم این پرونده رو به این چشم رو بکنم که انسان بی گناهی کشته شده. Before I had read the, the, the file fully, uh, I looked at it as a file in which an innocent person has been murdered. But after I read the file, I realized that this was a woman who was worthy of the name of being an Iranian because she was so courageous. In the interrogation uh, that I read, it turned out that she refused to respond to any of the questions because she considered those questions and the, indeed they were all against the law. As Jomle, as I said, I was asked where you live and what you have to do in Iran. For example, they had asked her where she lived in Iran and who she associated with. And she was in the same time. این به حرفه روزنامه‌نگاری من مربوط نیست که کجا زندگی می‌کنم با چه افرادی آشنا هستم به این سوال حاضر نیستم جواب بدم خارج از مورد and most courageously she had said this uh, does not relate to my profession as a reporter and so i will not respond the question of where i to the questions of where i live and who i associate with و بعدا در اعتراض به شیوه غیر قانونی بازداشت و با سوالات بی ربط اعلام کرده بود من روزه میگیرم و اعتصاب قضا میکنم و فقط آب می نوشم برای اینکه به شما بگم که کارتون خلاف قانونه و تا زمانی که حاضر نشید قانون رو رایت بکنید من فقط آب می نوشم And she had then go, gone on to say that to pro, in protest to the way she had been arrested and to the way the interrogation had been conducted and because the questions that were submitted to her and asked of her were against the law, she would go on a, uh, on a hunger strike and she would only go drink liquid. شنیدن این حرفا شاید برای کسانی که خارج از ایران زندگی می کنن یا در ایران هستن اما دوچار بازجویی در زندان اوین نباشن راحته اما افرادی که تعم بازجویی ها رو چشیدن می دانن. It's easy for those who live outside of Iran to think that it's easy to uh, object to these questions. But if anyone has any idea of how those interrogations are conducted and what the atmosphere of the prison is, that person would realize well, how much courage it takes to do what she did. <laughs> این شیر زن ایرانی از خودش نشان داد همین شهامت باعث قتل شد 
And it was because of this courage that this uh, lioness of a woman, this Iranian woman, showed up uh, of herself. That was what caused her murder. وقتی که شروع به رسیدگی کردن قوه قضاییه اعلام کرد که مامورین وزارت اطلاعات مسئول این قتل هستند. When they followed the case, the judiciary eventually acknowledged that agents from the Ministry of Information were responsible for the murder. و بنافاصله وزیر اطلاعات مصاحبه کرد گفت نخیر این حرف درست نیست. مأمورین تحت نظر قوه قضاییه مرتکب این عمل شدند. Immediately afterwards the Minister of Information با یک نفر متهم ادامه پیدا کرد. At any rate the file went ahead with a single uh, a single defendant. نکته دردناک این است که در کیپر خواست دادستان این قتل رو The important point is that in the documents submitted by the general prosecutor, this murder was declared as an unintentional, inadvertent murder. به یکی از نقاط حساس بدن از جمله سر بزنه و طرف بمیره این قتل عمده Whereas in our laws we have a, an article which states that anyone who strikes someone intentionally and the strike ends up in the, in the death of the, uh, the person who has been struck this counts as a voluntary murder اما در که فرخواست داستان این مسئله قتل غیر عمد شناخته شده. But the attorney general in his determination announced that this was involuntary manslaughter. فوراً ما به این مسئله اعتراض کردیم و گفتیم که این پرونده بایستی در دادگاه بالاتری که مخصوص رسیدگی به قتل عمدی است رسیدگی بشه. نه با پروسه قتل غیر عمد. So I objected to uh, the file being, uh, being taken care of in the court that it was, saying that because it was, it was uh, a premeditated murder, it had to go to a higher court than it had gone. جلسه‌ای که برای رسیدگی به صلاحیت دادگاه و ادامه تحقیقات قرار به تشکیل بشه در اواخر تیر ماه. The meeting of the court that's supposed to take the claim and the counterclaims is supposed to meet in July. یعنی آقایان سیف زاده دادخواه و سلطانی خواهش کردم که در کنار من در این پرونده دفاع بکنند. I anticipate to be in Tehran at that time because, uh, but because things cannot be predicted. I've asked three of my colleagues, Mr. Saif Zadeh, Mr. Dadkhah and Mr. Sultani to assist me in the case. الان این پرونده گزارش ما مدافعات ما حاضره و این پرونده تماما با مسئولیت من و تحت نظارت من دفاع خواهد شد. At this time the bill of defense is already and I have seen every item of it and the, the, the final document will also be prepared under my supervision. آنچه که ما در این دادگاه به دنبالش هستیم کشف حقیقت است و اینکه چه اتفاقی افتاد و چه کسی مسبب واقعی است What we seek in bringing this uh, file in, in, in treating this file is to unearth the truth the truth and to find out who was behind this case اما 
یک نتیجه بزرگتر هم آرزومندی بگیریم but we are hoping we would also be able to work towards a larger uh, conclusion as well می دانیم که متاسفانه هموطن شجاع ما دیگه زنده نمیشه we know of course that our courageous compatriots will never come back to life اما با یک دادسی علنی و افشای قانونی آنچه که گذشت ما امیدواریم سیستم قضایی و زندان ها به صورتی در آید که دیگر زهرا کازمی ها نداشته باشید In conducting the case in this way and exposing the crime, we hope to bring about a condition that in the prisons and in the arrest and interrogation process, things that happened to Zahra Kazami will never happen again. حسله شما رو سر ببرم خصوصا اینکه سخنرانان محترم دیگری هم هستن که واسی حرفشون رو بزنن violations of the law that have taken place in this case are too many to enumerate here but i do not want to bore you especially in light of the fact that we have other speakers uh, prominent speakers who would like to address you as well من فقط آرزو می کنم که امکان یک دادرسی عادلانه برای این پرونده رو داشته باشیم و الان از استفان میخوام خواهش بکنم که در این زمینه و خاطراتی که از مادرش داره برای ما باید I only wish to uh, work towards a just and fair prosecution and at this point I would like to turn to Stefan and ask him to say what he would like to especially if he has memories of his deceased mother Sad situation, but um, I can't stay in place. I don't know how these three ladies here doing that. Don't move, you know. They, and me, it's only one year, but they have been uh, in, in this uh, kind of stories for a lifetime. So imagine uh, how strong they are. It's a really a nice crowd. I've been doing uh, many conferences since last year, and it's the biggest, uh, biggest I have been faced to. So thanks a lot to Mr. Mishkini, who organized that. And thanks a lot to all of you who are present here tonight. Because, because we, I mean, I'm alone. I'm here. It's only myself facing the Islamic Republic of Iran in the story of my mother. So I need support. I need a lot of support. And it's going to go as far as you want to. I need support from you. And I need support from, uh, from Miss Ebadi. And it's going to be, it's, it's, I think it's going to be really up to us to um, give, give an end to, uh, to, to this kind of uh, tragedy. If it happened to me today, it's more than happened to you, to you, to you, to you, to you. If you have um, the bad luck to go to Iran or if you have families to Iran, or it probably did happen to you already. Um, you know, I, I don't really know what what um, you guys expect expect me to say. I don't know what you know. Um, I hope you.
you already knew what Mr. Bali said because it's a, it has been on news uh, for for two months, every day in a row, and uh, the story was in and the story was there. So I'm not going to repeat the same thing and um, come over it again. I'm going to open myself for. Um, for a question and answers to be more close to you and um, if, if I don't have the, the, the opportunity to answer everything or if we don't have enough time I uh, invite um, to Miss Carr or Miss Maiji talk about the political activist situation in Iran today. But before I begin that, I would like to thank the sponsor of this event, the Professor Meshkini. I'm also very honored to have all of you in attendance today. Since Islamic revolution in Iran, human rights have been violated under the name of Islam. That's why a big part of opposition group in Iran are challenging with this interpretation. There have been new Islamic groups that believe in the coordination of democracy, human rights, and Islam. Also, there have been secular groups that believe in the uh, con <laughs> contradiction of democracy, human rights, and Islam. Both of them are in danger because both of them will help us to get a democracy. Fundamental groups who control judiciary system and some other institutions are against democracy. Unfortunately, human rights situation is getting worse in Iran even after the fall in 1997. The newspapers and all reformist journalists and writers and publishers are under pressure and censorship. All of them in the legal system. In the early of the revolution in 1979, according to a mandate by the leader of the revolution, Ayatollah Khomeini, a revolutionary council was formed. The members of the Revolutionary Council were appointed by the Supreme Leader and the Council's mandate was to Islamicize all aspects of the lives of the people who had been in. It was a kind of legislation which controlled all aspects of life, whether public or private. By this legal system, all political dissidents are in danger, no matter they are secular or racial discrimination and violence. All this discrimination and violence are according to some article of criminal law, press law, and fundamentalist interpretation of Islam. By that, all law must be according to Sharia law. Six clerics who are selected by the Supreme Leader have the right for veto the rules that according their understanding of Islam is against Sharia. So parliament in Iran is not independent to legislation. In this very special situation, I would like to talk here about uh, the role, definition, and characteristics of a typical political activist in Iran. <coughs> the term activist, political activist, is very new in the political culture of Iran. In contrast to the earlier violent image of Iran, the transmission of interviews and 
commentaries of political activists have introduced the world to the tolerant, peaceful, and patient characters in Iran of today. From activists in the cultural and political arena in Iran, I should briefly discuss some fundamental characteristic to the Iranian political activists. Political activists in every field of its expertise has a struggle for democracy, human rights, women's rights, and freedom of expression. For these causes, artists and writers, journalists, lawyers have been and continue to be most active. Three, the Iranian political activists has witnessed the bloodbath of the earlier years of the revolution, therefore rejects any violent response against the regime. They have chosen peaceful means to bring about political change, creating dialogue with the current regime is one such approach. Four. From the second decade of the revolution to the present, the Iranian activist has attempted to draw on the positive aspects of the existing laws to defend freedom and democracy. In this respect, they have used the law as a, as a shield against the enemies of freedom. Five, Iranian activists has held the Iranian authorities accountable to the full application of human rights charter. Because the Iranian government had signed human rights agreement before revolution, and because they haven't denied that yet. Six, Iranian activists has transformed that was in favor of pragmatism. Eight, in the absence of a strong social society to support mass movements, Iranian activists have avoided provoking people into political action that could result in swift suppression by the security forces. Nine, despite this careful policy, the Iranian activists could not avoid danger for long. The security agency evaluated the long-term challenge of political activism and decided to physically eliminate them. Chain murder project was a policy against activists, especially against secular activists who are working and were working in cultural fields. 10. In short, the main challenge of Iranian activists had been survival. Unfortunately, the state has not tolerated such a moderate, such a, such a modest ambition. In the past three years, many prominent activists have been either jailed or forced to exile. Under tremendous pressure, they increasingly feel uh, they increasingly feel isolated, disp uh, despondent, and insecure. Under such gloomy conditions, the Nobel for Peace was awarded to an Iranian activist. Once again, the name of Iran and its political situation has caught the attention of the world. Presently, numbers of activists are in prisons or forced to exile. I believe the award carries a double message one to the Islamic Republic, and the other to the activists. On the one hand, the Nobel Committee 
warns the government to stop violation against human rights under the name of Islam. And on the other hand, it declares that the international community supports the democratic aspirations of the Iranian people who are working for that since one century ago. I hope both messages are understood prepared. This is very briefly of situation uh, of uh, political uh, activists in Iran and uh, it was uh, something that they chose, especially after reform in 1997, to challenge uh, with the government for getting more democracy and uh, more attention to human rights. Uh, and now uh, uh, I, I don't, and I think it's uh, my duty to talk about uh, some of political prisoners who are in very bad situation uh, and they need uh, help of uh, uh, international community and they need the help of all Iranians who are uh, living in abroad. The name of these prisoners are political prisoners for whom you can campaign my husband, Siamaki Kuzan. <laughs> Ali Rizo Jabori, who, who now is Rajo Isha Prison, uh, Arjange Dohudi. Ahmed Bortibi, Khadir Zahmani, Khuda Sabir, Reza Al-Jari, Irag Jamshidi, Amir Abbas Fahrabad, Muhammad Ibrahimi, Insaf Ali Hidayat, مهداد دوبرازبی، عباس دلدار، پیام پیران and of course the usual ones اکبر گنجی حجت الله حسن یوسفی اشکبری ناصر درفشان Malikud Muhammadi, Akbar Muhammadi, Hashim Agajari, Hussein Azlan, Abbas Abdi, and Amir Tiza. have a very short time for uh, question and answer period. So please make your questions again, I'd like to emphasize, to make it short and sweet. Uh, pass it on to the person sitting on the aisles, and uh, the person sitting there could bring it over to me and I'll pass it on to Dr. Hathcock so he could uh, start reading him. Please, it has to be written. No oral questions.
other movement, that is religious movement, the reformist movement, because they could be organized, you can see uh, their activities in newspapers, in sites, internet sites, uh, like Hezb um, Musharikat, like Mujahedan Inqilab Islami, like um, if if we can if we can call uh, the members of parliament to some uh, organization, to the base of uh, majority of them are religious and the majority of them are reformists. Uh, we can talk about their activities and everybody talk and uh, interpretation, their activities, because they could be organized and they could be in parliament. So now we are facing with these two uh, movements. One is uh, very clear, uh, one is very organized, but one is not. And there is no permission for them to be organized. Now this is problem for, for Iran. Uh, that's true that both of political activists, the religious activists and uh, secular activists, both of them are in, uh, are in dangerous by judiciary system and by this legal system. But uh, uh, secular activists are more in dangerous. And if uh, you study about uh, Murder, cha murder chain that we had uh, be before uh, and after reform, uh, most of them were secular. I think uh, some part of uh, young people who are belonged to secular movement, they are facing with some problem that I explained about that. They don't have rights to be organized. But I agree with you, it's uh, not, you know, it, it would be change, but not in short term, but long term. If without organization, they want to be very active in, uh, against government, I think we cannot get anything. We need to get permission uh, to be organized for dissidents in Iran. And now we don't have any chance for that, especially for secular movement. People are. What is your فعالیت کردن و حیات سیاسی زیرزمینی داشتن تا چه اندازه مفید هست و به نظر شما مزره به نظر ما هم مزره محتاج امکاناتی است در اون کشور برای سازماندهی سازماندهی نیروهای مخالف هم از جوانان یا کسانی که در سنین میانه هستند البته در ایران 70 درصد جمعیت جوان این نگرانی رو هم ایجاد میکنه که اگر وضعیت حقوقی کشور تغییر نکنه و قوانین غیر دموکراتیک کنونی نتوانه تبدیل بشه به قوانین دموکراتیک ما شاهد و انفجارهای در آینده خواهیم بود که البته ناشی از نارضایتی جوانان و همین نهضت های زیرزمینی است که به شدت نابسود خواهد بود به همین دلیل است که مخالفان در ایران امروز، منتقدان در ایران امروز بسیار تلاش میکنند که تحت شرایط مخاطر آمیز کنونی توجه بدن که ما احتیاج داریم به تصویب قوانین دموکراتیک و مادام که شورای به نام شورای نگهبان اختیار مطلق داره برای اینکه مصوبات مجلس رو به تو بکنه این امکان در دسترس نیست و به همین دلیل است که بیشترین نیروی فعالان سیاسی در ایران در حال حاضر و در چند سال اخیر صرف این شده که موانع تصویر قوانین دموکراتیک در ایران برای مردم توضیح داده بشه و حکومت تحت فشار قرار بگیره برای اینکه شاید تجدید نظر و اصلاحی در قانون اساسی جمهوری اسلامی برای ایجاد 
شانس های بیشتری برای تصویب قوانین دموکراتیک به وجود ممنونم به من گوشزد کردن که کل وقت پرسش و پاسخ ده دقیقه بوده و تقریبا تمامش سب شده اجازه بید من یک پرسش برای خانم عبادی و یک پرسش برای استفان رو به حضورشون عرض بکنم و بقیه رو تقدیم خود عزیزان رو بکنم که به صورتی با پرسشتون دست کم درگیری ذهنیشون رو برقرار بکنم سر کار خانم عبادی این پرسش به انگلیسی است Please comment on the human rights situation in Iran as far as the minorities are concerned, particularly the religious minorities. لطفا توضیح بدید درباره وضعیت حقوق بشر در ایران امروز به ویژه در خصوص اقلیت ها و باز به ویژه در رابطه با اقلیت های مذهبی. متاسفانه این پرسش به من تبعیض بر اساس مذهب دیده میشه. Unfortunately, in our law, discrimination on the basis of religion does exist. ما قوانینی داریم که طبق اون عمل واحد مجازاتش بر حسب اینکه مرتکب مسلمان باشه یا غیر مسلمان فرق میکنه. We have laws according to which the same crime or, or the same infraction uh, has different punishments depending on what the religion of the culprit might be. Intercourse between unmarried men and women is punishable by a hundred lashes. اما اگر زن مسلمان باشد و مرد غیر مسلمان مجازات از صد ضرب شلاق افزایش می یابد به اعدام این کیس دی وومن از ا مسلم اند دی مان از از ا نان مسلم دی پنیشمنت ول اینکریز فرام 100 لاشز تو این همان مسئله بود که یک تبعه آلمانی به نام هوفر در ایران بهش مقترح شد. This is this is the fate that a German man called Hofer in Iran was accused of. یا اینکه اگر یک انسان مسلمانی کشته بشه مجازات قاتل ادامه If a Muslim gets killed, the punishment for the killer is execution. اما اگر یک غیر مسلمان اگر مسلمانی غیر مسلمان رو بکشه حتی اکثر مجازات ده سال هست. But if, if a Muslim murders a non-Muslim, the maximum punishment is 10 years incarceration. و بسیاری قوانین دیگر And many more laws like من در اینجا میخوام اضافه بکنم یکی از عدلی که اجازه نمیده ایران وارد بازار جهانی تجارت بشود همین قوانینه uh, I would like to add that one of the reasons why Iran cannot join the World Trade Organization is this very discrimination چگونه انتظار داریم که یک سرمایه دار ژاپنی بیاید مثلا در ایران و 100 میلیارد سرمایه ریزی بکنه و برای ما یک کارخانه بسازد که ایجاد اشتغال بکنه در حالتی که جانش رو نمیتوانیم تعمیل کنیم Uh, Stephen, uh, there are several. <laughs> oh, the translation of your last statement. <laughs> you can't take care of the <laughs> As you 
see you're, you're standing at the foot of the Tower of Babel. <laughs> How can we expect a foreign investor to invest in Iran without being able to guarantee his life and property? Uh, there are many questions for you, Stefan, and basically uh, they are of a, uh, of a, of a reminiscent nature. Uh, one goes like this. Please tell us a little bit about your mother. What kind of person she was? What kind of mother she was? What she, she, what she taught you about life, etc. And another question related is, why did she go Iran in, to Iran in the first place? What did she wish to accomplish? Yes, thank you very much. I didn't want you to um, uh, take more of your time, that's why I did a very short speech. Um, as I said, in the dozen of conferences I did last year, you're the biggest crowd, and um, of course, you, you didn't come uh, exclusively for me, came because tonight you're proud um, to be Iranian, because tonight we have a Nobel Prize here. Um, so now, now I can answer this question. Of course, um, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, you are interested. But it's not. It's not enough to be interested. Um, I think we have to go uh, beyond that. Be further than that, and um, maybe do some work together one day. I saw. You know, I saw a lot of association, organization, Iranian association, Iranian organization. Um, and I couldn't count them on my fingers. Numerous, vast associations. And they all two, three people, and they all on, in, in their corner, and they don't work together. In fact, they work against each other. And, and that's really what this is about. And I've been trying to be uh, active uh, in, in, in the human rights, and I've been interested in, in other, uh, in fact, other assassination of uh, journalists. Uh, and I've been to this conference for, for this, this uh, Asian um, journalist, Jean-Dominique, and, and it was totally different, really. The, 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 the room was packed, people, the, the Asian, they were together and they were working together. Briefly, it was a different situation, but still, uh, I was very disappointed and, and I was very sad that um, we're, not, we're, not, we're not working together. That's where I asked your support. That's where I said that I'm alone uh, against a government, against the Islamic Republic of Iran. And that this time today I'm your voice because many of you uh, didn't have the chance to speak because um, Miss Carr, for example, uh, hasn't got this mediatic, uh, mediatic uh, diffusion as I had. And, and tomorrow, if I want, I can speak on radio, I can pass on TV in Canada. And I can speak, and that's the way we have to work. And I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, after one, at the beginning, I was very energetic. I have a lot of energy, and I'm ready. I'm ready to do whatever it takes to to get to my point. But more time passed, and more more I'm disappointed. To be really honest. So one more time before I answer the question, I ask for your support. Really, and maybe maybe it's a message, or maybe it, you didn't understand it that we have to change. Otherwise, 
it's going to continue. It continues. Continues our academy. You know, resolutions in the United Nations are not passed. The public opinion doesn't count enough. And Iran continues its violations of human rights. It doesn't care. I mean, the government doesn't care. And it continues. And we have a special guest tonight that is the perfect example for it. Was, was a filmmaker. Initially, she studied in uh, the cinema school of Tehran in the direction branch. Um, she she died, she participated in the production. She direct. I mean, she realized. She yeah, she direct. She wrote. She um, edited several films in Iran and as well in France because later on she went there. Due to the, Isla, uh, to the Islamic revolution, to the um, Islamic revolution, she, she stayed in France. She studied there. In '93, she we moved together in in Montreal. That's where she she started to work as a photojournalist. She has been really uh, pas passionate all her life for pictures. Um, and '97, she got her citizenship as a Canadian, me as well. And she, about in '95, she studied. She studied in photography. She had a big background in, in, in about about pictures, about the image. But she studied in photography. And about '95, she started um, traveling the world to try to capture the image, the informations uh, that will uh, eventually uh, uh, reach, sensibilize the, the individual from where the only change is possible. And um, she, she had a big bag, she had a big resume, IT, Côte d'Ivoire, uh, Ivory Coast, um, South America, and in 1999, she started to really um, work uh, in, in the Middle East. Israel, Palestine, all the refugee camps, all the re Palestinian refugee camps, uh, Lebanon, uh, Syria, and uh, Jordan, and um, then Afghanistan, Iran. She went in Iran in 99 for the, fir for the first time after 30 years uh, exile from Iran. She didn't actually exile. She went in 74 to work for the French television. Then um, she, she wouldn't go back. But it's an exile sort of way. And uh, she um, in 99, well, she, she came back uh, to Iran. Um, she covered uh, a few themes. One of, the, of her main theme was, was the woman. She gave a big homage to the woman, um, the, the Iranian woman. She illustrated the, 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 Persia, the Iranian woman who to keep, whom, in order to keep her um, Persian, uh, Persian identity, um, fight for 20 years without any help in a very subtle way. Uh, very strongly, you know, with, with details, with very subtle things, maybe showing her, maybe a little makeup, and she 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 work on on, on such a project um, very deeply, and she she came back in um, 2002, and then in 2003 um, she went to Iraq, and just she she passed by by Iran to 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 wait for a visa for Turkmenistan and uh, Uzbekistan. And there were some demonstrations of students. She, she thought it's a great subject to cover. Then she um, 
there were some um, parents of the students uh, demonstrating in, in front of the Avian prison. She thought it's a great subject to cover. And, and uh, that's, that's about the answer of the question. Uh, thank you, Stefan. من از علاقه شما به سرنوشت مادرم بسیار متشکرم ولی اجازه بدید چون من خیلی کوتاه صحبت کردم پیش از اینکه به سرنوشت مادرم بپردازم بهتون بگم که در این یک سالی که این وظیفه به عهده من گذاشته شده که صدای شما باشم گاهی بسیار امیدوار میشم و گاهی وقتی که به سازمان های ایرانی نگاه میکنم که هر کدام دو یا سه نفر بیشتر فرد فعال ندارن و اونها هم بیشتر رو در روی هم میستن و چوب لای چرخ هم میگذارند و با هم همکاری نمیکنن گاهی ناامیدی به من دست میده امیدوارم این وظیفه که من دارم این رسالت باعث میشه که سازمان های ایرانی قومی ایرانی بیشتر بتونن با هم کار بکنن و صدای خودشون رو رساتر بکنن و به گوش مقامات مملکت هایی که در اون فعالیت میکنن برسونن مادر من اصلا یک فیلم ساز بود در سال 1973 از ایران بیرون آمد در فرانسه کارش رو شروع کرد در سال 93 او و من با هم به کانادا آمدیم و او همیشه فکر میکرد که از طریق تصویر و کلام باید کار بکنه و فرد رو عوض بکنه چون فرد اون است که از اونجا تحول آغاز میشه سفرهای بسیار کرده بود در کشورهای بسیاری ساحل آج خاور میانه فلسطین اسرائیل فیلم تهیه کرده بود یک بار در سال 1990 به ایران رفت یک بار در سال 1999 و بار دیگه در سال 2002 که به اراق رفت افغانستان و اراق رفته بود در سال 2003 به ایران رفت و به تظاهرات دانشجویی برخورد و فکر کرد این موضوع بسیار خوبی است برای اینکه در ازش خبری بسازه و تصویرهایی بگیره و شد اون چیزی که دیدید شد I thank everyone very much. Unfortunately, we do not have time to get to so many questions, and the questions are really excellent. With your permission, what I will do, I will give the questions to the people they are intended for, and I would like to thank you very much. It seems as though the artists backstage are very impatient to come and entertain you, and I'll, and I'll yield to Dr. Mish. You need to give you an idea of the rest of the program. Thank you. Thanks very much. This is uh, Ebadi, Mrs. Carr, and Mrs. Laraji, and Stefan. Uh, we're going to cut the uh, intermission to 10 minutes, as uh, Dr. Carr pointed out. They are getting a bit rest restless and impatient. So please take a short uh, break, and uh, we'll meet you back in here in 10 minutes.
که اول آغاز ماهول بود مرق سهن آهنگ ساز مرتزا نیدا بود کلام ملک و شعرا و بها آنکل به زبان آزری ظاهرن اسمه رودخانه اثر جهانگیر و جهانگیروف دختران ایران این اثر بیش از شهست سال پیش ساخته شده و از سازنده آن نام و نشان در دقیقی در دست نیست وطن بگذار بمیسم برایت نامه دیگر برایت نامه ای نی نامه ای ای بهتر مادر بریدند از نیستانم دریق این قوم قارت گرد کنون دور است با یادت قزل خانم به قربت ها قزل خانم به قربت ها به یاد عهد صحبت ها را سجده برخواه کرد 
که دو بر پیش بالیدم و در من سرفه کردم خواه که دو بر پیش ما دیدم کدام این خواه به پایت آشقی جان و دل از کف داده می میرم ز تو در سینه سوزن دل دیوانه ای دارم میان دامنت جردان مادر خانه ای دارم قسم بر قدر یلبوز که از جان بهترت دانم قسم بر رو به کارون که از همه دنیا سرت دانم قسم عشق درا عشق نخست آخرت دانم تو یک دان مادر که ای شبی روزی فراموشم تو را تا هست جان مادر قلام خلق برگوشم اگر از قلده یلبوز آتش بر سرم ریزد اگر از قلده یلبوز آتش بر سرم ریزد وگر کارو می شود ماری به دور گردن آویزد اگر از چلستون عبیز بحر کشتنم خیزد نگیرم باز دست از دامن پر ماه و پربینت تو را میخواهمد باز ای وطن چن جان شیرینت
گلوه لفظ ملی بالا پارس ونکوبه مرسی که باز آمدم شب تبالوده دیدم به دریای خون پیکر توده دیدم سیاهی زندازه افزوده دیدم برادر فشرده گلوی برادر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر سعدی در زمان حمله مغل از ایران خارج میشه وقتی برمیگرده آرامش نسبی برقرار شده و شعری داره که میگه چه باز آمدم کشور آسود دیدم پلنگان رها کرده خوی پلنگی تجربه برگشت من به ایران درست برعکس تجربه سردیس و این شعر تجربه اون بازگشته چه باز آمدم شب تبالوده دیدم به دریای خون پیکر توده دیدم سیاهی زندازه افزوده دیدم برادر فشورده گلوی برادر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر شبی تار و طوفان و گردا به حائل به زندان به پای دلیران سلاسل ندانند حال مرا اهل ساحل ستم پیشه کردند یک بار دیگر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر چه زد اجده ها بر سر مار تیشه خود افعی شد و کرد بیداد پیشه به تیغ ستم کوش چیران بیشه پناه خدا زین مسلمان به کافر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر زخون در ایران آزاد رودی نه آبای مرقی نه بانگ سرودی نه شعری نه شوری نه تاری نه پودی مقل مقل هم نکردی چنین با تو مادر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر به هر کوی و برزن به بازار و میدان اجیران والی قذبناک و قرن به فرمان زهاک به فتبای زهاک آلوده دستان نشانیده بر سینه و تیغ خنجر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر سخون دل ایران به هر سو نشانه اجیران والی کران تا کرانه به کف خنجر مذهب تازیانه زده تکیه سالوس زاهد به منبر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر دریقا تو ای مادر ای نور دیده دریقا چه بد شد دریقا چه بد شد وطن باز بازی که دیو و دد شد مرا خاک آدم به سر تا عبد شد گل عشق و امید من گشته پر پر مرا خاک بر سر مرا خاک بر سر 
در این قاطعی ما در این نور دیده تند باز در خاک و در خون تپیده ز خاکت بسی لاله نو دمیده مگر حوز خون بود آن آب کوسر مگر حوز خون بود آن آب کوسر مرا خاک
تر شدم از کلام کلاقان آر و قار کلاقان قاری بعد از این این من و کنج قربت گوشه قربت و بیقراری خست زن شهر شیوم شرخیز می گریزم خیابان خیابان می گریزم ز اولاد چنگیز می گریزم به کو و بیابان می روم تا کنم سید قم را سوی دریای نسیان روانه می روم تا که دشت و دمن را پر کنم از سرود و ترانه Ben kayı hudur 
من گردم من سنا مهمان رنگ Dərdim çox alıb, dərd dedi yarım becə getdi Əfsusi ki, yarım gecə gəldi, gecə getdi Heç bilmədim, canan ömrüm necə gəldi, necə gətdi Məşhur dirəş qaləb bir bu həqdan Kəsin əhvalına, yarına cüdadır Elə bu yeşki məhəbbət, özü bir sirri xudadır Gəntlikdə ağardan saçını seyid ağadır Dünyaya bu şair, qoca gəldi, qoca getdi Əfsusi ki, yarım gecə gəldi, gecə getdi Heç bilmədim, heç bilmədim, ömrüm necə gəldi, necə gəldi, ay, ay, ay.
Münis Muallim, Masum Muallim ve Firuz Muallim. Bizim şehrimize çok hoş geldiniz. <gülüyor> Münis o, Masum o, Firuz, her şey az ustadanı kadime, قدیمی کنسرواتور شهر باکو هستم تیکه آخر برنامه ما رقص ایسترن لاو عشق شرقی به وسیله البته بنکوور در پارس برای خانم آزیتا صاحب جمع و آرمی صاحب جمع خیلی ممنون از شما شب خیلی خوشی خوش و خوبی داشته باشید